Our beloved icon, Billie Jean King, was rummaging through the attic this weekend, as a lot of us have been with all this free time, and she came upon something very special given to her 13 years ago by a then 25-year-old Andy Roddick. Take a listen. In 2007, Ilana and I go to the, to the finals of the Davis Cup in Portland, Oregon. We're playing Russia. And anyway, the U.S. wins. We hadn't won for many, many years. Everyone was ecstatic. And Andy runs over me and grabs my hand right after the match. I'm like, what, what, where are we going? He said, just come with me, come with me. We go back and I had to stand outside the locker room. Patrick McEnroe, the captain, wouldn't let me in. And this is, the match is already over, everything's over. I'm like, what? And so anyway, he runs in and he runs out and he gives me this box. And in it is the gold ball that I never had as a junior. So, so Andy, uh, as my grandma would say, you're a very nice boy. Um, explain <laughs> what the, for people who don't know why you get a gold ball, explain it and, and where yours was from. Yeah. So if you win, uh, I, I don't know the exact tournaments, but normally if in, in juniors and I, I know in, uh, some kind of over age group, uh, tournaments if you win a national championship uh you get uh, a usta gives a, a gold ball with that year and in that tournament and just in random conversations throughout that year uh billy jean had had made kind of a, a throwaway comment that she actually didn't have a, a gold ball i'm like wait a minute you have an entire tennis center named after you <laughs> but you don't have a gold ball like you know everyone who's played juniors and, and done well and i'm sure jimmy has a million of them and you know I, I just couldn't believe it and it's like what do you give someone to kind of show the respect that and, you know, kind of leading a sport and everything else. So I said, I'm going to see if I can get an actual gold ball mate. And so uh, gave it to Billie Jean. And uh, nice to see that uh, she still hasn't hasn't used it for uh, wood in a fireplace. <laughs> Do they not give you a gold ball for winning the U.S. Open? Because that's a uh, national oh. championship. I think she just yeah. kind of swindled you out of a gold ball. <laughs> well, that's fine. That's that's if that's worst case scenario, that's fine. But see, I I got one when I when I won the open, and I, I thought that was the case. Yeah. I don't know if there was a year that it started doing that. Um, but she uh, she did not have a, a USTA gold ball, which for me was didn't make any sense. So uh, we 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 tried to put the fix in there. Good on you. If yeah. our buddy Pat Galbraith, the president of the USTA, is watching, maybe you should get a replacement gold ball for such a, a magnanimous gesture that that you gave to Billie Jean. Just a thought off on the side. We want to move on and get a couple other topics covered here. Uh, Andy, as you know, uh, history tells us that things rarely happen well when parents of a player publicly criticize another player. This is in Serbian media yesterday as apparently Novak Djokovic's mom called Roger Federer arrogant. Yeah, um, you know, I, there's for me, there's one reaction to this. One is just unnecessary. Uh, you know, I, I don't know that we need to kind of throw those around from the from the sidelines. Uh, two, I can think of it probably wouldn't be one of my first six thousand words uh, <laughs> that I would that I would use to to describe Roger. I, I think there's been uh, you know some some stories coming out of that camp that are uh, uh, maybe concerning. Um, you know, at, at at best. And so uh, on on top of those, where you know we're supposed to turn uh, poisonous drinking water you know, in, into a glorious thing with our thoughts. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is actually only the, the second or third most uh, alarming thing that's been set out of that camp in the last couple of weeks. Look, for the last 10 years or so, I've always, 15 years even, I've been hoping for sort of a, a bad guy. Um, you know, in Borg era, you had Connors and Macarons, the bad guys. Djokovic had such promise to be the bad guy, but he didn't want that mantle. He's always tried to be the good guy. Now, maybe his parents can push him to his rightful place as the bad guy in the big three. Yeah, and I want to jump in. It's, it's just hard because if you disagree with someone's stances on a personal level, you can still think they're really friendly and still enjoy you know, seeing them or whatever. And then that shouldn't dictate your opinion on what they've accomplished on the court. So what I think of, of his stances on you know, big world issues that are going on right now and what he's accomplished in the sport are two completely separate things for me. And Novak has been unbelievable. And he, he's, he's certainly uh, has a real, real chance at being the best of all time, regardless of, uh, yeah, you know, if, if I happen to disagree with him on, on any certain issue. 
Well said. Uh, on a lighter note, uh, Andy, we showed this on the show yesterday, but we want to get your take on it. It's this guy who hits a tennis ball over his house, runs through, and then tries to catch it as he leaps into the pool. Now, Prakash, was he was calling Yahtzee. He said he thinks that there was an assistant on the roof. What do you say? On the roof. Yeah, I mean, you see what he does. Like, that's a huge swing. Like, that... I I don't, I don't, I don't buy this at all. And he doesn't get credit because he dropped the catch there at the end. Watch this. <laughs> After he jumps in, the guy drops it from the second story balcony or whoever's there. He has it, and then doesn't get, doesn't even convert it at the end. So why are you posting this? Do it again and catch the ball. <laughs> I gotta you say, catch it, Brett. you have you have to be a little more athletic than that poor fella to be able to pull this off. I mean, no, I, you know, I mean, just. I just, just the, actually, the only thing that makes me think it is real is that fact that he actually posted it not having caught it at the end. If you're just kind of shooting it over and over and drying off and rinse and repeat, you'd post one where you actually caught it. I don't know. Now I'm confused. I got to tell you, Jesse Levine did this exact same thing, and he pulled it off. He made the catch, and he claims he, you know, there was no grassy knoll guy throwing the ball in. All right. We'll try to uh, get so some. We might never get the inches we need.